There's a lot of sex in your book. So, um, how did it come about and, uh, and where do you get all these ideas? <laughs> <laughs> how did it come about? I, I think uh, I'll not reveal my sources. But, uh... Hello everyone, welcome to Bookish Season 2. Today with us we have Nomneel Chakravarti, one of the most popular thriller writers in India. And we are going to find out more about him, his next books and you know, what inspires him to write. So, Novani, tell me a bit about yourself. You know, how did you get into writing, and then why thrillers? Uh, it's been uh, ten years that I've been, uh, you know, writing books, and uh, it's a very, uh, you know, spooky thing that happened. Actually, my uh, I always wanted to be a sports person. I wanted mm -hmm. to get into, you know, first cricket, then football. But then, uh, you know, when you tell those things to your parents when you were a kid, they obviously, you know, think that uh, something's wrong with you. And at that time, you know, sports was not yes. so, so I think you even know, glamorous. Now, yes. yeah. it, it, still with the advent of IPL and all, it still is a little bit glamorous. Mm. But at that point in time, it was all, you know, uh, there's no career as such, you know. Mm. So that went out of the window and then I, I thought of uh, becoming a neurosurgeon suddenly. And, uh, but then that wow. plan also did not work out because I wanted to go to armed forces and become a doctor there. So at that it, I could crack uh, AFMC. So plan B also was out of the window and uh, I didn't have any plan C in my life, so I didn't know what to do and I uh, joined uh, BBA just because my other friends were joining and you know starting there so yeah. and uh, and it's, it was during the last year of my uh, you know college that you know this I don't know it just randomly and suddenly characters and, and plots started happening to me and they were distracting me from my studies and uh, so I thought uh, I might as well write them down so they'll be just away from my head and then I can focus and get back to study because writing, I've never written anything mm. before that. Mm. So uh, so what happened was when I when I ended up writing it for the first time, the first set of, first short, short story that I had written and I thought it would be done with and I'll get back to studies, immediately another set of characters and plot came into my mind. Wow. And within a trot of like, within a span of two, two and a half months, I ended up writing 30 odd short stories for myself only. I mean, not for anybody. Just, I just started. 30 is uh, a lot. Yeah, I know. It just kept, kept happening. I was on a roll. And, and during that process of writing those 30 stories, I kind of, as they say, uh, tasting blood, I, I suddenly found the true calling that maybe I can, you know, I want to be a storyteller. I have stories to tell. I have lots of stories to tell. And uh, that's how I got the taste of getting into the writing. And, and w w over time, I realized, you know, you know, writing is just an expression of it. It's more about, I love to think about people, about uh, situations, why nots and all. Uh, why thriller? I mean, I've always told that I don't think an author chooses a genre. It, the genre chooses the author because it's, it's, writing is so much about one's own personality. You know, uh, when, when you sit down to write, you may think you want to write a love story, which was the case with me with my first book. I, I thought I was writing a love story, but as I started expressing myself, there was this, you know, uh, element there which was creating and making, turning the entire story into a kind of a romantic thriller. I prefer to, uh, you know, focus on what came to me naturally, you know, and that's why the thriller thing which happened naturally, I started following it and, um, and here I am, 10 books, uh, 10 thrillers, yeah. No, I think it's been quite a wonderful journey mm -hmm. and uh, I always felt that, you know, you're writing your books are slightly different. Uh, you know, I think parallelly there was this whole revolution and wave of romance right, writing right, that had right. taken over India and books were selling a lot in that mm -hmm. space mm -hmm. and there were a lot of best-selling authors. Right. But I always felt that your writing is a bit um, psychological, uh, it it's deeper, your plots are very well worked out and mostly complicated. Yeah. So is that intentional or is that something that comes naturally to you? I think obviously um, it is something that comes naturally to me because I cannot, I mean, I didn't think any author can fake a style for a long, for a long time. You can ape someone but then you cannot do it mm. all the time and for, for long ten time. Books. For 10 books. For 10 books, definitely you can do it for 2 books at max. Yes. You know, so uh, and uh, another thing is that I always wanted to, uh, you know, I didn't want uh, you'd want to write and tell stories because, uh, you know, the, because everyone else there was a revolution and you know everyone else was telling. In fact, I think I was one of the first batch of writers who was part of that revolution, which came in a decade back. And when Indian uh, authors started appearing in bestsellers list earlier, it was only the West authors or the international mm. authors who were ruling the charts here. And uh, uh, but then it just happened naturally, and I, I was happy when I started writing my third book, which act you know coincidentally was my first book with uh, you know Random House when you mm. I got in touch with you also. Yes, it was How About a Sin Tonight, yes. and that was the book which actually gave me my voice. You know, I mm. took a lot of time. That's the you know, longest time I've taken to write a book, one and a half years, and mm. uh, that book really gave me my voice. Till then, the first two books, I was different, but I was not distinctively dif different. I was different in a in a you know elemental elementary wise. I was different. Let's talk a bit about the thriller genre because, you know, um, 
we all know it and we talk about it quite right. often between ourselves as mm. well that there are a lot of international thriller writers yeah. widely read in India mm. even now Lee Child, James mm. Patterson, many others um, but there are very few uh, original thriller writers in the country at the moment mm. why do you think that is the case and do you think readers are not ready for uh, such kind of writing from Indian authors? See, uh, answer, I'll, I'll answer the second part first that mm. whether readers are ready or not I think readers will always be ready for something new uh, the only thing is that what I feel is thrillers as a genre inherently is something intelligent. Mm. You know, you cannot write dumb things in a thriller, mm. you know. Uh, compared to a romance book, I'm not saying romance is a dumb genre, but uh, it's based on emotions. And we as Indians or the subcontinent, we, we connect to emotions more than intelligence. But thrillers as a genre, you have to use your brains. Yeah, it you has to, to be remember. smart, yeah, it has to be clever, remember, you know, well plotted. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean, in the third chapter, what happened, you have to remember. Otherwise, you may not enjoy the climax or something like that. So then there are, and thrillers are rarely spoon-fed. Romance can be spoon-fed and other genres can be spoon-fed. Thrillers cannot be spoon-fed. You cannot reveal everything. There is a subtextual that uh, you know thing that will go on in a thriller. Yeah. And you, uh, anyone as a reader, has to grasp it. Yeah. So that's there. See, another one thing that I believe is that why because I see a lo I read a lot of Japanese thrillers, uh, oh. which have come up internationally in you know, a translated works. And you know what I feel is that what we have not been able to do, Indians writing in English, uh, you know is that we are not able to create our own personality of thrillers. See, when, when you read a crime thriller, yeah. let's say an Indian uh, crime writer writing a crime thriller, the elements that he or she uses is kind of acquired from the West. For example, there will be a journalist, there will be a detective or a police officer. The police officer will have a you know sad or a backstory that he will be fighting on. The journalist will be a girl mo mostly, and she will fall in love with the you know the. So these are elements which are there. It's a format kind of yeah. you know, and we try to uh, fit in our story into that format. What the Japanese have done very smartly, they have created yeah. their own format. Even and only those books have gone international. Even the Swedish people, yes. they have their own way of own. They have very uh, Japanese yeah. flavor, but you know they yeah, are exactly. they travel very well, and people very well, across very the well. world are reading uh, in them. In fact, uh, uh, author like uh, you know Kino Minato or uh, Kigo Higashi, you know, yes. you read the books, you know, you're reading the same genre as the crime thriller genre, but you're reading a different kind of storytelling. I think that different kind of storytelling in thriller has not been created in India. Do you think that India is ready for you know uh, a really big? best-selling brand thriller author that can travel internationally? I, I, I would like to believe that. I, I would like to believe that but uh, it's not that easy also uh, because the kind of emotions that we Indians you know follow and fall for uh, yeah. may not necessarily be an international. There are a few things which are universal all the time but you know because of our you know which is our plus also that we are culturally so rich and so specific that our books have to be read and our movies have to be you know made in a particular way so that it appeals to our people and then it goes to the international market things are changing it is towards the right progressive uh, path but i still think uh, we have not I, I personally think we have not reached the cusp yet because for that i think we need at least three to four writers who will you know you can just point point out these are the ones that are you know going to shoot out completely mm -hmm. so it's it's there and and also it's it's a task to create original thriller plots, book after book after book. It's a task. Well, let's also talk about something, you know, which I definitely yeah. wanted to ask sure. you and which makes your book unique and, mm -hmm. and very different from what others are writing in this right. similar space is there's a lot of sex in your book. So, um, how did it come about and, uh, and where did you get all these ideas? <laughs> <laughs> How did it come out? I, I think uh, I'll not reveal my sources, but uh, but the thing well, is, we'll, uh, we'll see. <laughs> but the thing is, uh, you know, when when you uh, write, see, my, a lot of people, you know, uh, kind of accuse me saying that there's a lot of sex in the book and everything. But if you really sit down and count, there are not many sex scenes. There are even a handful of them. The one scene which will, you know, the hangover of one scene remains over five chapters, maybe. And uh, maybe even though in the uh, you know uh, six, uh, six, uh, successive five chapters there might not be one single sex scene, but because you're carrying that hangover, you feel it's there, it's there, it's there. And I think somewhere um, my writing style has a sexual subtext to it. It's just you know it's a very funny thing uh, when I started writing, and uh, you know all, all those short stories and all. I have taken an oath that I will never write about girls and I will never write about sex because what will? And you've just <laughs> done the opposite. <laughs> because they never say never. So you're breaking all the oaths you yeah, took. Yeah, because right? I, I was scared when my <laughs> parents will read my books. What will they think of me and everything? But boy, have I come far now. From so, sports to sex. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. So let's let's talk a bit about the Forever series, which is a two-part sure. series yeah. that you know got published this year, Forever mm -hmm. is a Lie and Forever yeah. is and thank True. And click with the readers. Yeah, so it's, it's a great title number yeah. one. I, yeah. I must say that you've come up with a thank great you, title. Yeah. And 
I think CDs always makes it a little bit more exciting for me as a reader mm-hmm. also because you want to find out what happens next mm-hmm. and you know that really sort of makes you buy the next book and the finale yeah. to find out how Easier the story ends. Easier said than done though <laughs> because with the series it's To write it is difficult very, I think very. but it's a good plug for you. Yeah, because especially thrillers because if you cannot hook a uh, a reader you know with the first book nobody's waiting for the second even yeah, if you end up writing true. it doesn't yes, matter yes. so what we are so the stranger because that was a learning experience for both you know you as a publisher i guess and me as yes. a writer because i had not written a trilogy before and i think even uh, yeah. you know a continuation thriller trilogy has not been attempted in english and that was three Indian. books there that was three books not, you know not two. so maintain that interest is a very difficult task no i i think you i totally agree with what you're saying mm-hmm. but tell me um about uh, possibly the most unusual comment remark that you got for the forever series because you readers writing to you all the time from across the country right, right, what right. was the most unique or unusual response that you got that oh, you still remember uh, i don't know about unique but what happened because the entire series deals with sexual abuse and uh, which was an issue that i wanted to write yes. a, a, a story on not necessarily i didn't want to preach and say oh this is a you know issue this is anyway an issue and this is an issue that has always and forever been you know below the carpet nobody talks about it kids come to their parents and uh, you know they are not taken seriously yes. uh, by their own parents and we and see that every day you every day, know, you every open day, the tv channels with young parents see. it's changing they are more mm. educated about it they're no more uh, enlightened about the whole matter so they're more sensitive uh, towards it but with you know the interior cities and all it's still there it's very much there and um, i think most of the, the things were because a lot of girls and uh, especially girls who read the book uh, they 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 kind of uh, confessed that they had been uh, sexually abused as a kid and they had never been able to come out with it with in front of anyone so a uh, lot of people broke down during the climax because that's where the thing comes out mm. you know the entire series uh, twist comes out in the climax and mm. so i got a lot of messages and mails saying that uh, you know i cried in the end and i totally understood related to it because there are things uh, you know which is a curse of our societal design i guess which does not allow us to come clean about a lot of things no i think sexual abuse is a big problem it's in big, india and yeah. it's it's very interesting how you've very subtly woven it into your plot yeah, that's what i wanted to do because to i didn't story, want to preach, you know, yeah, yeah i didn't know, want to preach because it's a thriller story well you know love also like, mm-hmm. like you write romantic thrillers as well right. at times in fact the new book that is going to come out hmm. in february right is uh, about cheating so how did that idea come to you and um, why like why did you think that uh, it would be interesting to publish it around valentine's day uh, but the reason is obvious uh, because <laughs> i'm anti establishment so uh, guys you're going to celebrate valentine's day here is the, the book which will go on cheating <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah on cheating on infidelity and especially in today's times you know the the the, the germ of it actually uh, you know i keep talking to my friends and to some readers and everything and and somewhere i keep connecting few dots which i think are universal which is happening in everyone's life and one of the things that i i came across was a lot of people you know in today's world with the advent of facebook whatsapp and uh, you know all these uh, social media stuff um, it's very easy to reach out you know mm. it's easy to you know jump the line it's very easy to um, have your own safe world in a cyber space yeah. and then you live a lot of us are living a dual life like multiple lives i multiple would say lives. because yeah. you know you Which can be correct. like you can have different names and yeah, handles yeah, and yeah. you know like one of the characters in the book personas. also has uh, you know two different lives and and you can do it very smoothly without you know harming the equilibrium of your present life well uh, you know it's been wonderful you know editing cheaters actually and um, each story is very different has a different flavor right. and interesting characters that you woven around Uh, so and I also very interesting working with you. I've seen you evolve, like I've said. Okay, but I'm always you. nervous when I send you the first synopsis, <laughs> because uh, you know what happens with thrillers is also that when you write the first synopsis, there are a lot of things in your mind you are also not clear about. You know, but you need to present something to uh, the commissioning editor so that the book, uh, you know, is made. Uh, for example, I'll give you an example where I was really scared was the book. X that we had done, and it had a love story in it, yes. you know. But I had no clue about the love story, so I had just given the synopsis. In the synopsis, it was only the thriller part that was. And you're telling went, this to me eight years after, yeah, uh, yeah. the episode. <laughs> you know, so there was this, uh, you know, so I, I was like. Uh, we are uh, finding a lot of new things. <laughs> I know. I we know, should know. do this more. These things uh, should not be come out, but then what the heck? Like now, I can't tell you about them. So the entire love story, I was also not sure whether I will explore it or not explore it. But what I knew was there on the synopsis. 
So when I started writing it, I knew there was a separate timeline that came out which had the love story. Well, you know, it's been wonderful, nevertheless, working with you, even right. though you're you're hidden it, a, and these secrets are coming <laughs> out after eight years from the closet. Uh, no, I, I must also say that you've been really open to ideas, which is a great thing. And one of the thrillers that I'm writing after Cheaters was something that we had discussed. I don't want to talk about it much now because yes, it's, it's, it's a time. surprise. It's yeah, a surprise. But I have a good touch with good feeling about it. It's yeah. really different. It's a completely different thriller. That uh, great. So uh, before we end, yeah. O'Neill, do you have any message you'd like to give? to budding authors I, I just uh, tell this everywhere I go is that uh, you know find your own voice say something not because uh, you know you have a story but you have something more than a story to tell you know there has to be some I'm not talking about message social message you know I'm talking about you know something that is that goes beyond a story brilliant so that brings us to the close of this wonderful conversation it, it was amazing we have to continue I think afterwards also yeah, there's yeah. much more that yeah. I want to ask Which you now off the camera. but thank you all of you guys I hope you enjoyed watching our conversation and listening to a lot of stories behind the book that Nonil has written I hope you enjoy the conversation thank you thanks